Harry and Meghan's wedding was the biggest day of their royal lives, and it didn't exactly go without a hitch. So what went wrong? Ahead of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's wedding, Meghan's half-sister, Samantha Markle, appeared to be enjoying the spotlight, perhaps a little too much. Meghan later told Oprah Winfrey that she and Samantha barely knew each other, but that didn't stop Samantha holding interviews with basically any news outlet that expressed an interest. At the time, Piers Morgan dubbed her a little vulture and asked her if she was making a killing selling out her half-sister. Samantha appeared unbothered by the accusation, however. Some might say it's pretty rich okay, coming from okay. you, Samantha Markle, to come on television and blame media vultures. Samantha cashed in on the big day itself, too, allowing a camera crew inside her house so they could film her watching Meghan and Harry's wedding. Her partner, Mark Phillips, only told the Daily Mail that she was, quote, making big money with an exclusive TV interview. He wouldn't divulge how much she was getting paid for her time, but appeared to insinuate to reporters that it was somewhere around $25,000. Whether or not Meghan expected these shenanigans from her half-sister on her wedding day isn't clear, but she hasn't ever publicly commented on it. It sure sounds like that might be for the best. Arguably the biggest fiasco of Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's wedding was the absence of Meghan's father, Thomas Markle. Thomas ditched the ceremony at the last minute, leaving Meghan to walk down the aisle with King Charles instead. Inevitably, the absence of Meghan's father stirred a media frenzy that continued through her wedding day and beyond. This whole ordeal began when it came to light that Thomas had staged photos for the paparazzi. Then, he claimed he'd had a heart attack, which prevented him from attending the ceremony. Predictably, some outlets suspected that Thomas was lying about his medical condition. In the meantime, Meghan released a statement two days before the wedding, announcing that her father wouldn't be attending her nuptials. It read, "'I have always cared for my father and hope he can be given the space he needs to focus on his health.'" Around the same time, The Telegraph reported that both Harry and Meghan were very upset that Thomas would not be attending the ceremony. While many speculated that Meghan's mother, Doria Ragland, would be walking her down the aisle on the big day, Charles ended up doing the honors instead. Since Thomas Markle pulled out at the last minute, the wedding organizers didn't have time to take his name off the wedding program, making his absence even more obvious on Meghan and Harry's special day. The appearance of Thomas Markle's name on the final program was first noticed after Prince William and Princess Catherine posted the official order of service on their joint Twitter account. Various media outlets reported on the apparent oversight, leading Kensington Palace to issue a statement addressing it. The palace said, "...the order of service was produced before it became clear that Mr. Thomas Markle would be unable to attend the wedding on medical advice. As a result, some aspects will be different to what has been printed." The same statement also announced that, in Thomas's absence, Charles would be the one to walk Meghan down the aisle. Moments after Meghan made her way down the aisle, social media was rife with speculation that she had failed to curtsy to Queen Elizabeth. Many wondered if, in the moment, Meghan was so overwhelmed that she completely forgot about the curtsy, while others speculated that it might not have been necessary because she's not British. Talk about a plot twist. Etiquette coach William Hansen also took to social media to weigh in on the perceived break of royal protocol. He tweeted, "'Meghan, did you curtsy to Her Majesty? I will have to lie down for months if you did forget.'" Another user wrote, "'Could someone please tell me why she did not curtsy to the Queen? Is this a new protocol because she is American? Because she forgot? What?' While this was a much-talked-about moment on the day, it later became clear that Meghan did, in fact, curtsy to the Queen. As it turns out, everyone missed it because the broadcast footage happened to cut away at the exact moment Meghan performed her curtsy. If you watched the wedding on the day, you might remember that a still of Prince Harry lifting Meghan's veil in front of the altar went viral, mostly because it appeared the prince was having such a hard time with it. Prince Harry had a strained, nervous expression on his face as he slowly lifted Meghan's veil to reveal her face. As over a billion people watched from home, the camera was trained on Harry and the look of sheer concentration on his face. Body language expert Judy James later told The Express that Harry was incredibly nervous during the proceedings. She said, "...Harry showed signals that suggested the highest levels of happy anxiety. That happy anxiety seemed to completely overcome the prince as he lifted his wife-to-be's veil. From his facial expression, it appears that he wanted to get it just right." When looking at the BBC's footage, you can even see Harry fidgeting with the veil for a few moments longer to make sure it looks good. Looking back, there was plenty that could have gone wrong here. He might have messed up her perfectly styled hair, or worse, caused her tiara to slip from her head. One thing's for sure, though, Harry likely heaved a huge sigh of relief once that part of the ceremony was over. American Bishop Michael Curry delivered Harry and Meghan's wedding sermon, evoking equal amounts of shock and awe from the gathered guests. The bishop didn't alter his theatrical preaching style one bit, despite the fact that he had found himself in Britain with the queen in attendance. I know that the Bible says, and I believe it, that Jesus walked on the water, but I have to tell you, I didn't walk across the Atlantic Ocean to get here. 
the bishop's sermon on the power of love apparently left some royals red-faced, while other guests looked downright scornful. In a piece written for The Guardian, Diana Evans later said, "...it was a sermon that will go down in history as a moment when the enduring seat of colonialism was brought before the Lord and questioned in its own house." The passionate sermon wasn't the only thing that was out of the ordinary, however. Curry also later admitted that he went well over the allotted time. He explained, "...I was shooting for six to seven minutes. I really hadn't anticipated there are moments of pause, and there is a number of nonverbal interactions that happened in the sermon that actually take up time. And so it ended up being a little bit longer than I had planned." In the end, despite aiming for six to seven minutes, the sermon lasted a whole 14. Whether King Charles dozed off during Harry and Meghan's wedding is still a point of contention among many royal fans. Some believe that, during Bishop Michael Curry's speech, Charles nodded off, the then prince's head was bowed, and his eyes appeared to be closed. Now, he might have just been resting his eyes. Charles was no spring chicken even then, and with all the drama that had surrounded Harry's wedding, nobody could blame him for drifting off during a long ceremony. While the cameras missed Meghan's very important curtsy to the Queen, they did somehow manage to capture a shot of Charles seemingly snatching 40 winks. Of course, eagle-eyed royal watchers quickly noticed this and took to Twitter to joke about it. One user wrote, "'Prince Charles is falling asleep.'" Another joked, "'Prince Charles texting his concerns about the length of the preacher's speech.'" Meanwhile, one user wrote, "'Someone find the switch on button for Prince Charles.'" However, Judy James later insisted to The Express that, even though Charles appeared to be dozing off, he clearly didn't. Well, that was a service in the hall, wasn't it? <laughs> Shortly after Prince Harry and Meghan Markle tied the knot, they were escorted from the church to a lunch reception. Thousands of royal fans waited outside to catch a glimpse of the couple as they passed by in their carriage. But a few people found themselves quite startled when one of the horses in the procession decided that it had just about enough of all the fanfare. In aerial footage of the procession, one of the horses in the lead can be seen cantering off course. Luckily, its rider quickly got the horse back under control, and it dutifully continued its classy canter down the road. Of course, this little mishap got Twitter talking once again. One fan posted, "'Sassy horse moment.'" In the comments of the footage, some people pointed out that horses often get spooked, even if they're highly trained. One person wrote, "'No matter how well trained, they are really like two-year-old wonderful children. Fault not the rider. He did a great job in the saddle.'" Another said, "'A horse is going to be a horse no matter what. They aren't unfeeling robots. Could have gotten bit by a bee or something.'" As it turns out, it wasn't just one of the cavalry horses that had a temporary lapse in judgment on Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's wedding day. Social media erupted when Meghan Markle appeared to cuss in surprise as she and Prince Harry's carriage made its way through the gates of Windsor Castle. Hey, it can happen to the best of us, especially if you're not used to riding around in carriages. Meghan appeared to let out an F-bomb as the carriage pulled through the gates. However, others argued that she said, oh wow, instead. Naturally, tweets about the incident were plenty. One person wrote, I swear I just saw Meghan say f in the back of the carriage as she went through those gates. Another tweeted, turned the royal wedding on just in time to see Meghan definitely say f Yet another said, Meghan says oh f as carriage enters private section of Long Walk. What a farce. Whether or not Meghan actually dropped an F-bomb is still up for debate. What we do know is that Harry reportedly said that he was ready for a drink as the carriage ride was drawing to a close. And after a day like that, who could blame him? 